name's Brian Black. Um, I'm the chair of the Waco Mayor's Committee um, with Individuals with Disabilities uh, here in Waco in Central Texas. And number one, I appreciate y'all coming tonight. Um, hopefully y'all uh, saw us on Facebook, you know, our uh, Instagram website that's new that we have, whatever that may be. But um, I want to find a little bit out a little bit about y'all. Then I'll tell you a little bit about me um, and just where you found us. I'm kind of curious to know kind of what, what that demographic's like so that we know how to reach out and what might be doing best. So, Kim, why don't you start? With oh, wow. Hi, I'm Kim Johnson. I'm the transition specialist at Midway ISD. I am also the treasurer of Waco Mayor's Committee for People with Disabilities. When I became the transition specialist, I joined Waco Mayor's Committee so that I would know who I'm supposed to know in Waco mm -hmm. to do my job. And so Absolutely. it's been a wonderful, wonderful organization to be with. Um, this will be my fifth year, or this is, I'm actually in it now. This is my fifth year as the transition specialist, and I've learned so much, um, but there's still so much more to learn. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm Joanne. Okay, Joanne. I have who's 14 with intellectual disability. I found out about you because the, the old fashioned way, because I'm not uh -huh. real tech savvy. Uh -huh. You had flyers at Elite Therapy and that's one oh, of the places to go to therapy good. with a bunch of information and this was one I could make that sounded particularly interesting. Good, cool. you're good, you're good, good. Okay, if I don't spell your name right, that's fine. it helps me remember, so it's okay. That's all that matters, right? Uh, I'm Amy Pettis. I'm the special ed director with Robinson ISD. Yep, thanks for coming again. Uh, you're welcome. Happy to be here again. And I think I found out about it through CRCG. Probably. Maybe not. And then she emailed me, but I'm pretty sure I found out about it through CRCG or through the um, educational service center. We got the flyer. Yeah, and it's yeah. on, I put it on my calendar and I put it on our district Twitter Good. and campus feed. And all that oh, stuff. thank you. Yeah. It's Ann. Amy. 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 Somebody else from Robinson was here last week. That was her. Oh, that one she? It was me. Oh, Tear glasses down. <laughs> my brain doesn't work. That's okay. You're good. It's okay. You're so good. who are you? Yeah. yeah. Who are you, brain doesn't work? <laughs> she presented last week. Oh, Lord. You did a great job. Well, thank it's you. about ABA, right? If I can read it, I can do it. But it's, it's not in front of me and it's not happening. Uh, my name is Molly. I am a DCDA with positive behavior sports. I'm also the vice chair of the Waco Mayor's Committee. Um, I think that's pretty much. Perfect, perfect. Sorry, perfect. all my introductions. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Angela, uh -huh. and I am, my son is autistic. Okay. Um, PDD as okay. well. And um, we've been involved with the Waco Mayor's Committee functions for quite a while, since, uh -huh. pretty much since the uh, we went through the Christmas programs and yeah. other things that we've done at art, art things. And, and yeah, so uh, my son is now out of high school. That was his choice. And, um, <laughs> he was done. And yeah. um, so um, we've been doing transition stuff for quite a while, looking into lots of different things. And, um, and it sounds good on paper in a lot of ways, but when you're actually having to do it and with an adult mm -hmm. autistic yep. IDD person, mm -hmm. yeah. there is nothing for them once they get out of high school. And we'll speak to yeah. that tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just had one turn 18, so we'll, we'll mm -hmm. I'll speak to that, but yeah. you're, you're right on. Yeah. Very true, very true. Good. I'm Nita Bray. Uh, with, um, and uh, I try to, I attend the Waco Mayor's Committee, which I try to almost every month. Um, but I work with Heart of Central Texas Independent Living Hostel, and I work with children with disabilities there. So um, I want to attend these meetings just to help my um, consumers sure. further, give them Absolutely. information, awesome. and give them Brian's yeah. phone number. Sure. You know, Absolutely. Just to help them more, because that's what our main resource that we do at Hoftel is information and referral. So okay. it's a lot, a lot of people just call us for information. Hey, where, who can I go to for this? So these are very beneficial for yeah, me. Good. And they're grants. Angela, like, Nita, 
Nita, yes, Angela. Yes, I was just saying. And <laughs> yes, we have a, a children's grant Good. to uh, yes. 20 and under. So if you're 20 and under, um, we have a $500 grant uh, that you use once a year to go towards, I mean, it's really, it can go towards almost anything. Um, uh, Amazon purchases, but you know, we can only purchase certain things that would help them with their disability or like jo uh, working a job or, or things like that. We can't just right. go like purchase whatever they tell us to. Right. Sure. Uh, <laughs> job, maybe their uniform. Yeah, like we've yeah. purchased computers, um, right. laptops. Um, uh, one gentleman wanted, just wanted some headphones. He didn't even use the whole grant. He's like, hey, I just want some headphones. Yeah. And I was like, I think we can do that. Like so we got some really awesome, we like got that. a awesome. uh, bus passage. You know, we never got the answer on that a couple years ago, so I'd really like to know that answer. But yes, I had a parent reach out to me sure. for bus passes to get back and forth to MHMR. Right. And so um, there's just, uh, we pay for well, therapies, we pay for therapies, co-pays, medications, sure. um, medical bills, DME. Um, I mean, it's just, if the child needs it, we, we do our best to try and purchase it with the $500. Sure. But I probably shouldn't tell you all this, but oh, we, tell us, tell us. we will go over the 500 in certain, certain, like we had a girl who needed a vibration plate because she was stuck at home during COVID. She needed a vibration plate because she had um, cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the plate cost like 700 and, and the mom's like, I'll pay the difference if you pay the 500. And the doctor was like, no, we got it. And paid the whole the whole thing. For that us. piece of information made to come into this room. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And I will tell you, it is wait listed right now, but it's fine. But that's okay. You know it's there. Yeah. Yes, and you know you'll be the first served next year if you don't get served this year. And we got down the wait list really far mm -hmm. this year. Like um, we had people who who should have who were at the top of the list who really probably should have been further down, but we just had so many people not follow through or decide mm -hmm. they don't need it, mm -hmm. oh. and we were able to make it really far down the list. So I don't want that to discourage anyone from calling us. Cool. We're making $8,500 a month. I know. Right. <laughs> Especially for therapies, because ABA, oh, ABA okay. is not being covered by most insurances, and that's what we are paying for right now the most yeah. is ABA. I we need to discuss yes, that with you, because yes. I've got to come back to that. I'm sure you cover all of this kind of stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's a great thing for free speech. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Is there a minute? Okay, man. And I heard if there are students. Yeah, the Waco, Waco Transit is a fantastic Waco ISD, system. yes. What? You do have free transportation with your yes. ID. With their yeah. Yeah. Midway ISD, you do not. They pay a considerable amount to Waco Transport or Waco but Public Transit. But there's also... There are discounts that you can go and you have to have a doctor fill out a disability form mm -hmm. and you can ride for 50 cents. I mean, but there's also a special needs transportation service and if you call 24 hours that's advance. going to point transportation in yes okay you need 30 minutes on each more side okay. and I, I it is a regular that's free to pay yeah, yeah. Uh, yes it's door to door, door. Okay. Okay. what medicaid pay for it if they're on medicaid can we just use need a, uh, okay. for the grocery okay. okay. can you put a reminder about that in the newsletter Oh, no, I don't mind. Okay. okay. I forgot to when we talked the other day. I, I should have put it back okay. in there after we talked. It didn't. No, I don't mind. Okay. Oh, actually, appreciate it. Sorry, we still yeah. have people to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Karen. Oh, hey, I'm Karen Oakley with the Elite Therapy Center. Um, I handle all the marketing um, for that clinic. We do pediatric speech, OT, and PT, and I'm also I serve on the Waco Mayor's Committee. Uh, for people with disabilities for several years now and thank you all for being here and just mm -hmm. everything that you bring to this table is just as valuable to all of us as our speaker is so we appreciate your attendance good good well, i always like to do that just to kind of get some oh, oh i'm sorry gage is that gage <laughs> what's your first name again michael michael that's right okay michael combs i have an 11 year old son named gage and he's uh um delayed i mean he's got a thing called uh, TRRAP disorder, it's some kind of gene thing. Um, yeah, I saw it on Facebook on, I think it was either Elite Therapy or um, No Limitation. I'm not sure which one. Good. That's great. That's great. 
Um, so I like to do this a little bit at the beginning because I think it helps everybody become a little bit more comfortable and it helps people understand who's in the room. Probably each one of y'all probably now has a question that you want to go ask somebody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I just like to do that a little bit so that I can get to know you and y'all can get to know each other. But um, I am in financial services, like I said, um, Brian Black, um, and uh, in, 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 I'm in insurance and financial services here in Waco. I've been in Waco for 23 years. Um, went to Baylor, uh, played baseball at Baylor, and there's just been opportunities here in Waco, um, and it's been great. Um, I have, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing that the reason that I like to share this part of the financial services side of helping families in financial planning is I have a son with special needs so I speak from a perspective that as a parent um, that I've learned over time I'm not the guy that knows everything at all um, but I am going to share some of my story and some of the things that I think are going to help y'all um, that maybe y'all didn't have um, that, well that I didn't have whenever Caden was growing up that's you know my passion is to help those people as I became educated I know how it feels for it to hit me when they're 15 16 17 you know and go oh my gosh I haven't planned or I haven't done what I needed to do um, and so not that it's never too late but um, I can promise you it's a lot easier if you'll start you know when they're when they're earlier um, but there's a plan for everybody um, regardless of what age and so I want to share a little bit about that. Um, I am going to share some things that y'all are going to have to kind of think of your situation and think of your son or daughter um, and think of your financial plan, where it is now and where you might want it to be. Um, and we'll go through that, but you are going to kind of do some self-examination type stuff tonight. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about the difference between individual planning financial planning, which we hear all the time, um, but yet we don't understand how special needs planning is so different. Um, we might understand the financial planning of ourselves, but we don't understand what it is as a special needs family to plan. Um, so those are, that's just kind of a, this is what we're going to do type thing. Y'all feel free to answer, to ask questions. Um, I want this to be kind of laid back. Um, and uh, it's a great group, and I appreciate y'all coming. So, um, first, I kind of want to start off um, with kind of a, what I call a special needs planning scorecard. Okay, um, and basically, what it's going to do is going to ask some questions. Some of this you're going to recognize, some of it you're, you're not. Um, but it's just going to ask, you know, on a scale of one to ten, kind of where you're at, where you think you are, um, as far as. Um, the information that's on there. Can I have one of those, Karen? <laughs> well, that's going to go away in a minute. So, um, so as you get this, uh, at the top it says, have you taken the appropriate steps to ensure your loved one with special needs will be cared for when you can no longer do so? Um, the lower some thoughts to consider. And then, of course, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, Please give yourself a score based on your level of preparedness. Um, whenever I first took this, okay, just to let y'all know, my score was very low. <laughs> All right, um, I did not have this high score of you know I've got it all together type thing. Does everybody have a pencil or a pen? So let's just go down it. I don't want y'all to spend a whole lot of time analyzing it. Um, I just want whatever comes to your mind first as far as, well, this is where I am, or I know nothing about that. Put a one there. I mean, it's okay. Uh, this is just a measuring stick as far as where, you know, you're at. So ad adequate funds. If something happens to me today, there are adequate funds to cover all the expenses that go along with the daily care of my special needs child. Now, 
Caden um, was diagnosed with Prader Willi syndrome uh, when he was um, six weeks old. Um, we, uh, Hillcrest is now no longer. He was born in Hillcrest on February 8th of 2003, and that's pretty much, you know, when my world changed. Um, and financially, that became um, a big concern of mine at that point. Um, he was born on Tuesday, Tuesday night. They said, you know, we're going to take him into the NICU for a little bit. Don't worry about anything. It's going to be all right. We're just going to run some tests. They did that. They came in two hours later. He said, we don't want you to be concerned, but your son's on the way. He's being transported to Medical City in Dallas. Um, and it's like, okay, so we just had a son. Don't be concerned. But he's in an ambulance on his way to Dallas. Well, that was an emotional, you know, nightmare to me to a point to where when I went home, um, you know, that night just to get some clothes and get the clean, I physically just got sick to my stomach because I just saw all these things flash before my eyes of, you know, Caden's the one that's supposed to hit the home runs like Dad did. He's the one that's supposed to kick the soccer ball like Dad did. He's the one that's supposed to run up down the street and ride the bike and you know, I could go on and on and on. Y'all know these stories. And so all those things were going, you know, through my mind. And got up there. He was in the NICU for six weeks, came home. Um, the cool thing about it all is he's hit the home runs, and he's kicked the soccer ball, and he's ridden the bikes, and he's done all those things just in a different way. Um, whether it's through Special Olympics or organizations at schools or you mentioned no limitations. And it's not all about the sports, but that was a big part of my life, and that's what I saw um, whenever I was going through that experience. So while we were up there, adequate funds, as I sat outside the NICU, because we could only go in so many hours a day, and my mind was going, adequate funds became something that I started thinking about. How much is this going to cost? How much is this going to, you know, I wasn't the most educated on health insurance and how much you know, it's gonna cover and not cover because I just had never had a child that had been sick. And so the whole adequate funds thing is something to think through all the way from if they went into the hospital expenses to where if something happened to them in an accident expenses. Um, at that point, we didn't have Medicaid for Caden. And Medicaid and Medicare is a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic we're not getting in tonight. <laughs> um, if you got questions, I can tempt. To, to answer those. But um, we, uh, at that point, um, Caden needed to, we needed to decide whether or not he was going to get growth hormone. Um, Prader Willi syndrome, they're missing their 15th chromosome, which has to do with their hypothalamus, which builds muscle, okay? Um, and it is the number one killer in kids with obesity. Um, and so Caden can put on 50 pounds in three months, easy. We have to keep the door locked, um, the refrigerator door locked. We have to keep the pantry locked. We have to make sure he's on a thousand calorie diet per day, not per month, but per day. Um, and he's food seeking, that's what he wants. And we have to keep that you know, in control. And part of that was getting, um, was getting some growth hormone shots. And there wasn't any re research, there wasn't anything, but you know there was a $15,000 price tag that went on it. And it's like, okay, so here's $15,000 price tag, here's Caden. Tough decisions, you know, that we have to make as parents. Um, and funds is a lot of it. Um, and so I just share that just because that's where it started with me. It started with y'all somewhere. I don't know when, I don't know where, but at some point it started. So starting with adequate funds, think about where you first started realizing, do I have the funds or do I not um, to take care of it? You know, <clears throat> and I'll share this in a minute, but ensured quality of life. For Caden in Gage, and whoever, I, I don't understand the, I don't know the kids' names, what's your, 
Um, Stephen. Stephen, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So you talk about, you know, let's just say Stephen, for instance, take him for example. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that when you're gone, um, and I'm very upfront with this, is we're dead and gone one day. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And our kids, something's going to happen to them. We don't know what. Pray to God they're taken care of and somebody steps up, right? But we want Stephen to be taken care of and have the equality of care that he had when you were taking care of him or when you were taking care of Gage. Um, and that's a question mark in a lot of parents' minds is today I can take care of Gage or Stephen and I'm doing great, but you're on wreck on the way here, and boom, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Well, what's been done? Who's planned? I mean, is there anything in place? Um, and so, quality of life. We're going to talk about that, work on that, give yourself a score there, okay? Um, other family members' needs? Does Stephen Gage have brothers, sisters? Mm -hmm. What is your son or daughter's name? Ian. Ian? Mm -hmm. Okay, I Ian. Do they have brothers, sisters? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's Gage is eleven. His brother's twenty six, and his okay. sister's twenty eight. Okay, they're both married. Okay, good. Stephen. Yes, he, he does. Older. He's the youngest of okay. four. So how old? How old is he? He's he is twenty three. Twenty three. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So, great. Um, yeah, and you can't rely on the older ones to take care of them because they got their own life and families to live. You said it. You got That's it. it. Got it. And you know what? On top of that, you don't want them to have to. I don't want them to be um, told to have to right. care. And I'll talk yeah. a little bit about That's that. But how old's Ian? He's 14 and his sister's 12. So, okay, you've got a younger sibling. Okay. Good. Caden has, I have um, an older son that's at Baylor. I have a younger um, daughter uh, that's 14, so he's kind of in the middle. Um, but other family members, I have to consider Aubrey and Cage. You have to consider, you know, what's their needs, what's their other, you know, siblings' needs. So, um, what are their, what are their, you know, needs? Um, government benefits. Just put down there how educated you think you are on government, government benefits. Even if we work with government benefits, Medicaid, Medicare, in here, I think we would still probably rate ourselves below a five <laughs> because it's changing daily. And, and it's it's just very complex, exactly. Um, if you turn it over on the back, letter of intent. Um, have you written a letter of intent to express my wishes for how my beneficiary with special needs should be taken care of in the future? Okay, so I'm going to pick on you because Gage is, I'm going to just sit here and all that. So. Let's just say that God forbid something happens to Gage and um, spouse or whoever might help take care of Gage. You're gone, not around anymore, and you know, here's Gage sitting down after you're gone, right? And he doesn't know what in the heck to do. Um, and you don't really know what's going on in his little mind, right? And so, Gage is wondering, well, who's going to take care of him? You know? I mean, and I forgot to get this out, but I'm going to get it now. Um, <clears throat> and this is an important thing, but um, medication, right? It's 4 o'clock when all this happens. Somebody walks in and says, Gage says, I need to take his meds. And that person is like, well, I don't know about meds. What meds do you take? And he's like, well, I know I take a red one. And he goes, but I can't remember whether I take it at night or in the morning or at noon. You got Gage sitting here, you got Caden or Stephen or Ian or whoever, and he's like, well, they don't know what they're doing. So there's some trust issues that start that quick, right? And so the letter of intent and the story 
is so important that you start writing that thing tonight for that person that you think might be able to take over. Now, I wrote mine in a way that anybody could take it over. At 6.30, can't get it up. At 7, this is what he likes to wear. If this happens, he has a meltdown, this is what we do. It would, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It happens to all of us. And we want to make sure, again, that he has the quality of care. And the only way that that's going to happen is if you can write down your story. And if that's too difficult, let me know. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you with it. Um, I've got some things that I could share with y'all that might help kind of get you going. But, um, you know, mine's in a safe, and you got it written down, and whoever comes is going to get that and get it to the right person. But I don't want, I don't want Caden sitting there going, what do I do? I know I'm supposed to take those meds, and I know I'm supposed to eat at 530. They don't do it, and I don't take my meds, then what, what's going to happen? And that's real. And I don't have to say anything else. Y'all know, right? <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> but it's reality. Trust, special needs trust. We'll talk a little bit about that. If you know anything about special needs trust, just score yourself there. A will. I know we've heard of will, do a will, do a will, write a will. Get this done, that done, but have you done it? Um, it doesn't cost a significant amount of money to do a will. There's ways that you can write a will that doesn't cost anything sometimes. It costs me nothing to sit down and write a story about Caden and what people need to do to take care of him. So there's unique ways, there's ways to do that. Um, guardianship, <laughs> I went through this um, recently. Um, which was um, very educational, to say the least. Um, Kim works with that 247. Um, so if you got any questions, just ask Kim. Oh, no, she'll I'll answer all. Um, but uh, anyway, it was, it, was a, it was a great process, great educational process going through it, understanding what guardianship is, what it isn't, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and so that was, that's a process if you, I mean, you're, they're 23 and 11 and 14. So you're probably the only one. But I can promise you at 14, it's going to be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. And at 16 or 17, that's when you probably should start planning. Well, and there, there are all the keys. Yeah, and there are alternatives to guardianship as well. But right. everybody needs to understand that those are revocable by the right. by yeah. the child. Yeah. So it depends on on the level of your child's ability yeah. to make choices. I mean, I, I'll be honest with Caden. I mean, you know, we we I mean, we had to take away all of his privileges pretty much just because he's not competent enough to know you know, what to do, but at, and at the same time, we didn't want some of those things entering back into, uh, or, you know, saying no. Nope. Um, so anyway, trust, let's, or guardianship, sorry. And then advice. Have you sought any legal advice? And not, I'm not legal, but have you sought any financial advice or anybody out there? If you haven't, I sit down with families all the time and we just talk. I mean, you know, I listen to their story, they listen to my story, and we figure out what's the best thing for you. Um, three questions that I always think are the best question to ask is, what do you want, right? And then if you get what you want, then where are you gonna go? So, what I want, what do I do if I get what I want, and then how are you gonna get there, okay? So we want to figure out what you want. We want to, you know, figure out um, how to get it, and then we want to get you there. And that's the three, you know, main questions that we kind of talk about. So if y'all are interested in that, more than happy to do that. So hopefully y'all just thought through that. I don't have time tonight to go in depth, but I'm sure this has kind of got 
your mind racing, just like it had mine racing. Um, and it is a lot to process. I get it, okay? You could spend time on this for hours and hours and days and months trying to go through this. But this is for you to have so that you can, you can just get the juices flowing on what are the things I need to work on or get educated about. And these, these are some of them. Any questions about this? Where did it come from? Where did it come from? <laughs> I have a um, special needs financial planner in Austin um, that I work with called Rainier Financial Group. Um, and they are a um, organization, or their, their group down there um, specializes in special needs financial planning. She was kind of been my mentor the last few years. She's been doing it for 30 years. They travel all over, do everything. Um, and so her, they, they've come up with those and they've you know added um, to them. So I took a one page thing and it's kind of got the two pages and some of them I came up with that I felt like I had to think through. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because there's things on there that I had to think through that maybe they didn't think was important but it was important for me. <laughs> so you may have two or three that you want to add. And if you do, perfect. You may have some of those you want to just check out. Like, I've already gone and seen somebody and I have a plan and I don't need it. And that's fine. Put something else in there. But it, no, it's, it's good. It's, it's come, good from, that's what it's come from a little bit of everything. So some people down there, some of my personal stuff. Um, so it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of info to process, but hopefully it's a foundation to get y'all thinking. Um, so we've kind of talked a little bit about the financial needs and do you have the adequate funds and how educated are you and those sorts of things. Um, now I kind of want to talk a little bit about the differences between traditional planning um, like we would traditionally plan financially um, and then the difference and the things we need to look out for when we're planning financially for um, our special needs kiddos or adults, okay? So on the left side, you're gonna see just traditional planning. Um, kind of some basic things, but let's just walk through, you know, those over there and then we'll look over to the right and look at the special needs planning and how those kind of correlate. But on a traditional side, you're looking at estate planning, you know, children's goals, retirement, home, investments, giving. I mean, what do those all look like to you, right? I mean, those are some things that we think about, some we don't. But that's something that um, a lot of us think about. But in special needs planning, you've got to look out for wealth distribution, gifts received, inheritance, special needs lifetime support, um, those are a little different um, because as a special needs child who's on Medicaid, or is... Um, Stephen? Yes, Stephen, yeah, is he on Medicaid? Yes. Okay. I, yeah, that was a... Is question. Gage on Medicaid or is no, Michael? I didn't even know he could. Okay. Well, and if he's not right now as a student, he can apply for his own Medicaid and Social Security disability oh, at age 18. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you this too, not to scare you, you know, when we went back to get our Medicaid back, they said, great, you know, we'll get you signed up, we got your paperwork, you're number 22,463. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, so then why did I even apply? Because in my lifetime, 22,000, I'm just not, well, long story short, it moved a little quicker, Caden got his Medicaid back last year. So you just don't know by the numbers, but um, don't don't take that large number just as there's no reason why you should do it. Don't um, not I, apply. And do not and apply. Yeah, you go. And you got to do it as quickly as possible. Yeah. As, as my son's been on the list for ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a little over ten years now. That's about when Kate um, Kate got his. Yeah. We had a doctor help us when he was three weeks old. Yeah. So, yeah. and he's at 15,000 now. So, 
but he was he was not eligible for Medicaid mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on our income till right. when they're under eighteen. Right. But the being on the MHMR list is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And those are called Medicaid waiver lists. Yeah. And the reason that that's important is for when they have Medicaid of their own. Right. Uh, um, because those waivers give them certain um, abilities to do housing, um, some other independent living things, or some medical things. So he can apply at 11 years old. Yeah, you can put him on the list now. Uh, he won't get it till he's 18. For the Medicaid for waivers. Medicaid. Yeah, he won't get Medicaid Well, there's a wait list 18. for Medicaid waivers, so yes. you can put your child on at birth if yep. you know about the That's the thing about it. Yeah, that's the thing about Medicaid waivers. Yeah, what's it's, a Medicaid waiver? It, it's even, it doesn't, it, it may not go off your income, you lost a child. They're on the list and they're very low on the list. Once they get 18, the Medicaid waiver, that means that they will kind of bump them up that list quicker and get them mm -hmm. some and services. Are you'll have a Medicaid waiver come top one, one month? We haven't really no, but we can. That's I, can that. topics. I can share with you the meetings that I attend, Michael, for those, because I try to learn as much about them because those are the most questions. I, I can share some information, too, of like, um, what is it called? PowerPoints that I have yeah. of them, too, because uh, it's a very, um, there's several of them. Yeah, I, 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 was, I heard, you know, that I should be signing them up for stuff, but I didn't know what stuff yeah, or right. when or what. I know we probably yeah, won't get any benefits now because of the income, income threshold, I'm sure, but eventually when I, yeah. you know, yeah. retire and he, you know, because I had him, I'm a little bit older, so I mean, I don't want him to do that. Yeah. 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 Sorry, we digress. No, that's what I want this to be. I want this to be. Um, but I'm not going to spend a whole ton of time on all this because there's a lot there, but Traditional planning, you know, you got your budgeting, you have an emergency funds, savings for child's goals, such as college, stuff like that. You look at the other side, you know, you gotta have higher emergency, you know, um, reserves or funds, um, special need expenses um, that might come up, things that you want them to do, be involved in, you know, this and be involved in that, whether it's you know, Special Olympics or whether it's something at the school or programs that normally are not covered, right? That you don't think about. Um, there's just some additional budgeting um, that has to take place. Um, Caden, we started his Medicaid whenever he was uh, three to six weeks old. We submitted everything. We got it when he was 16. Or no, yeah, got it when he was 15. Let's see, got it when he was 11, sorry. Lost it um, when he was 16 um, because of a change in just Medicaid and just the diagnosis going from a medical saying he's got a behavioral and it's gone one day, boom, okay? Well, where are those reserve funds? We didn't have them, you know? You know, just be honest, it's just not there. Um, and so, you know, that's something to think about because down the road, I didn't think Caden was gonna go have to go into a treatment facility and get some things, you know, worked on. He had put on 60 pounds and was, you know, just not doing well at all. He would go in, get his meds taken care of, all that, sitting at home one day, go out, get the mail, says next, uh, Texana um, was the name of the place he went. Pray to Wheelie Clinic in Houston, open it up, got a bill for $148,000. And I was like, really? But, okay, he got his Medicaid back, and so that was all covered. So that was a blessing um, and an answer to prayer. Um, so there's reasons to go ahead and get it going because you just never what's going to change with them, you know, we just, we just don't, so think about that, um, life insurance, health insurance, disability insurance, auto home insurance, income protection, 
Look over to the right, life insurance, government insurance benefits, lifetime supplemental needs. In addition, what are they going to need? And then all insurance is an additional plan. Now, I'm in insurance and I'm in financial services, okay? You don't have to share with me at all. But, <laughs> um, I, and I'm not selling anything, but I'm telling you, if you don't have a life insurance policy, then you need to seriously sit down with somebody and think about it. Um, and the reason being is, if something were to happen to me, okay, I have an insurance policy where that money will go to a trust, okay? And when it goes to that trust, that's what provides Caden with all of these expenses, right? Um, with with that being said, uh, insurance all going into a trust, um, would that impact, like, if they were getting SSI? Uh, um, yeah, what's there, SSI? Are, there are some accounts, Social Security income. Oh. Um, there are some accounts that you can have up to a hundred thousand dollars. I've got the video right here. Oh, you have it? Okay, show it, baby, show it. I'm getting there. Okay, I'm getting there. Good. 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 Question. There's also a good question. That is a great I question. I intend those meetings as well for Social Security, and that, oh wow, those are, yeah. I, yeah. I, well, I attend those with HHSC, so, mm -hmm. and yeah, there are, yeah, Brian does. There's accounts that you can have that won't affect it. Won't affect there it, are yeah. some mm -hmm. that will. But if you have over a certain yes. amount in those, yes. then yes, it will. Yeah. And, I, and I think so there's something about it being in their name. Yes. Yeah. I don't have yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, insurance is the quickest way to, to fill a special, special needs trust. Um, and, you know, you come up with however much you think it's going to cost to take care of Stephen or Gage or Ian or Caden. And, we sit down and figure out based upon expenses today and let's work with inflation you know at three percent maybe on the low end what is that going to look like in his lifetime because that's probably where you need to start um, I've got a lady that bless her heart she just doesn't have a dime to her name and when I say dime to her name I mean dime to her name um, she came to see me <clears throat> wanted to do something um, and she now has a policy for five thousand um, dollars to leave uh, him so that he will have some money um, to just kind of get going and that <clears throat> that policy to me is as much or more than the person that comes in and buys a half a million dollar policy. I mean, because I know that lady's heart, and I know where she's at, and that's the kind of stuff I like to get involved in. That's where where I like to go. <laughs> because those are the people that are really trying to do what you know they want to do, and, and really try to make sure that the financial and family planning part is taken care of. Because she may start at 5000 <clears throat> in 10 years she may bump it to 250 but she's gotten started right mm -hmm. she's gotten started for 20 bucks a month because that's all she can ha handle it's all she could do but she, at least she got started and that's the biggest thing with all this I can come in here and talk and do all this stuff but if you don't take action then you know there's <laughs> it, it just sits on your desk right and nobody takes action the next thing you know you haven't done anything. You lost your compounding interest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and then on the last one, I talked a little bit about will distribution of um, assets, different things. But you know, there are some legal things that you have to go into with the trust. Um, but I really don't want to go into that too much um, because it can get really confusing as well. Um, but I'm going to touch base on it in just a little bit. So this is just some of the differences. A lot of information again, but y'all can have it. You can take it. If you got a question about it, call me, and we'll go over it.
come by the office, we'll go over it. We can go have coffee, we can have lunch, we'll go over it. Whatever y'all want to do. Um, Is but your there's, contact information somewhere? Yes, I do have it in my backpack. I'll get it to you. Well, I'll just give you my cell phone. While I'm thinking about it. 254 495 for all you people out there. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> the internet. 2527. Um, and so, Brian Black. Yeah, Brian Black. B R I A N Black. I've seen you on this. It's, it's over. It's next to George's. Yeah, it's okay. That's a good spot. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Um, and so, anyway, those. That is that. So, what we were talking about as far as accounts, <clears throat> we talked about being careful managing you know, the money. Um, so special needs kiddos, adults cannot, if they're, on, if they're on medical, getting medical benefits, federal, federal funded benefits, sorry about that. They cannot make more than $2,000 a month, okay? Um, and so something has to be done with money. If they're working, it can't go beyond that $2,000. Make sense, okay? So we're at a $2,000 kind of threshold there as far as what we can do. One of the biggest issues that I had um, come up about six months ago or whatever is when they gave out stimulus checks. Well, some of the adults had, were getting stimulus checks. So you get a $1,400 or $1,600, whatever it was, I can't remember. Um, stimulus check, and that person's working, they almost get to that 2000 plus what they're already making, which may be 1500 It goes beyond that, and government finds out about that, whatever it may be, they can take the actual services away. So I got a call from a place in Dallas, and they said, can you come talk about what we need to do with this money and we're overwhelmed and, and I said well you know we'll talk about it and this and that and she goes well Brian I just know what to do because she said I've gone to Walmart and I've bought every iPad and every game and every pair of Air Jordans and every pair of this and she's just going down the list and I'm like you have to spin down some but some people get to that point to where they're not educated enough to know that there's other places to put that money for down the road versus having an iPad, getting mad, not liking it, not wanting it, having behavioral issues and throwing it down and it's gone. There's 1,500, it's, you're done, right? Or you're outgrowing Air Jordans or you're, whatever it may be, you know, this is an organization, okay? Large organization in Dallas that was doing this. And so, and there's a lot of others out there that are doing it. There's moms and dads that are doing it. But I kind of want to show y'all a video on how to do some things to avoid going over that $2,000. Um, and it's very simple. Um, basically, it's called an ABLE account. Um, and as Kim was saying, you can, uh, you can put up to $100,000 in there um, so you can get away from you know, the 2000 um, if they're making more than that, they can put it in this ABLE account, um, or they can get uh, up to, they can put up to $15,000 in it a year, a year. And so um, the gifting from grandparents, from people that, you know, want to gift a child or whoever it may be, money every month because they're making however much, um, is 14000 so let's just say you have a grandparent and they want to give $1,000 to, you know, your son or daughter a month, they can write a check to the ABLE account for $1,000. It can go straight into that account and it can help build it up to $1,000, $100,000. And you just get one account. You can't have another account once mm -hmm. you hit that Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, you can go up to 500000 <coughs> in an ABLE's account, but once you hit the 100000 is when your Social Security would stop. Okay. And yeah. so 
Yeah. And I say hundred thousand because it's just that's where. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's a liability true. if you're on Medicaid and the the person that owns the Ables account dies, and their medical bills are more than mm -hmm. Medicaid. That would affect their first name as well. Yeah. So there there are some downsides. I, I that's why I say no. There, there are. Things. There totally because are. Because I don't want parents to be. Oh well, it's, it's you know it's free thing. and it's so wonderful. Yeah. It's just like guardianship. Guardianship's yeah. great, but you don't know what you're taking away from your child either, yeah. and it, that's the right thing. So, yeah. Yeah. is an able account at a regular bank? No, no, it's done through the state of Texas. Um, it's like oh. an educational savings mm -hmm. account. Yeah. I can get you the website. Yeah. Let me show it up here. Ohio came out with it first. They've yeah. been doing it a whole lot longer. Um, it's not something that's going to be taken away. So, I mean, no, it's, we've just started, Ohio's kind of the model. Started five years ago. Yeah, in mm -hmm. Texas, um, because I think they've been doing it about ten to twelve years, and they've mm -hmm. kind of made, you know, for instance, debit cards. They didn't have that when it started, no. but they realized, you know, they need some debit cards, mm -hmm. um, and so they kind of started that program, and then Texas started it. You know, this state starts so they're kind of a model to what some of these other states are doing they're all very different yeah. so you have to really you can only have one ables account open you can do it from any state but the the texas one does require you are a texas resident yeah so yeah. do you have to have um, a co-signer on that account or an executor i i mean i do mm -hmm. have my younger brother mm -hmm. i mean just because if something were to happen to me, his name's on the account, but I would suggest that. Yes. Yeah. The Ables account is to be treated like an investment. Yeah. Okay. Um, because they do, it does do That's some ups and downs something. with the amount of money there. Oh, okay. So. But if, I, if, if I'm giving to that or have someone giving to it consistently, yeah. and I come down and it's like, oh, by the way, Brian, you know, it's going to cost fifteen grand for your kid to mm -hmm. have growth hormone. Mm -hmm. You go, oh well, since I've been building up some reserves for, you know, Caden and his mm -hmm. table account, I can go in there and use that money for those types of things. Can it only be opened if they're eighteen years old? No, no. So it, it can be opened at any time, at any time during their, their life, life period. They just have to have the disability diagnosed before age twenty six. I went to a seminar. I don't want y'all to think I was. <laughs> I went to a seminar. Oh, and learned at the seminar. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good great stuff. tool. So I'm going to show y'all a video. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it just gives an example of what um, it is and how one individual has taken advantage. <laughs> Did it undo? I didn't get one of those for you. Oh, the TV okay. dropped in the college. Oh, did it cut itself yeah. off?
weird thing that you I have never been here. I've been outside this cheering them on. Yeah. But yeah. This is a, a great facility for that to be done. Is that that prom thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The prom you can come to forever and ever and ever. <laughs> yes. so. The 25-year-old who has autism is feeding horses and his bank account. He works three jobs and saves over $1,000 a month with one goal in mind. I'm saving a lot of money for, to buy the farm. I'm going to name the farm. It's going to be the little patch of heaven. As he saves money to buy his own farm, Brian and his parents are also hoping he'll have enough money to pay for day-to-day -day expenses down the road. Together, they're putting money away in a special savings vehicle designed for people with disabilities called an ABLE account. It was a bit of a game change for folks because for so long we were told we can't save, don't have any assets. Until ABLE accounts were created in 2014, individuals with disabilities had to have less than $2,000 of savings in their name to qualify for federal programs like Medicaid, Supplemental Security Income, and other services. ABLE accounts removed that cap allowing those with special needs and their families to contribute up to $15,000 a year in an ABLE account and still receive benefits. This gives us more elbow room and gives Brian the ability to, to save and to, to plan and to do what he needs to do to take care of himself, just like everyone else has to. Few who qualify are taking advantage of these accounts. The ABLE Resource Center estimates 8 million people are eligible for these accounts Yet as of June, just under 46,000 had been opened. Financial advisor Charles Massimo says many families don't know about these accounts or understand how they work. With an ABLE account, if you go over that $100,000 maximum contribution, you're going to start to lose your governmental benefits. So you really have to manage that account to make sure it stays under $100,000 throughout the life of the account. The great farmer. Yes, that that's you? me. That is for Brian, his ABLE account gives him a chance to save for his dream, but also the reality of being able to help provide for himself when his parents no longer can. There's an expression in the disability community, oh, I can never die. You know, I have to be here forever. None of us will be. But even if they're not around, Brian's parents say they find comfort knowing their son has money saved in this account, giving him more freedom and financial independence. And they're eager to share their experience so that other families will consider opening an ABLE account if they have a loved one who has a disability. Sharon, the numbers are, are stunning. Only 46,000 of an estimated 8 million people who could be opening these accounts. Uh, who, who is eligible? How, how would you kind of define that for people? I think people don't understand that it's so many people. If you were diagnosed with a disability before the age of 26, if you receive Social Security benefits, or even if you just have Social Security meet the, de the criteria or the designation that they have for functional limitations, then you could be eligible to have an ABLE account. So there are so many people that are in this situation that don't realize that this is a possibility. There are also many families that are struggling to make ends meet with the loved one that has disability at the current time and may not think they have the money to save. It is worth trying to see, I think, if you could put money into this account because there's really no other way to do it without being able and, and not losing the benefits. It is an incredibly important story, and Sharon, thank you so much for bringing it to us. My pleasure. So why are so few Americans actually taking advantage of these ABLE accounts? Joining us now to talk about this is Charles Massimo. He's a financial advisor and the founder and CEO of CJM Wealth Management. And thanks for being here today. It's great to see you, Charles. Thanks so much, Becky. Why do you think more people don't do this? I think there's a couple of reasons. One, it's fairly new. So there's a lack of information out there. I think secondly, there's so few qualified advisors that really work with special needs and disabled families, so they just don't have the knowledge to advise them. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of compensation or incentive for a broker to really advise on these plans. And I think third is that families, as such as mine with two boys with autism, 
you're so um, inundated and overwhelmed on a daily basis with so much that planning really lacks with these families. So I really don't think they take the time and effort to really understand what's out there for them. Well, let's talk about that. You, you, your firm specializes in this, but, but you specialize in this because it started at home. It was a process you had to navigate yourself. How, how did you go about doing that? What did you find? Your sons are 19 now? Sure, my sons are 19. They were both diagnosed with autism around 18 months old. And I quickly learned this was a lifelong uh, challenge that we're all gonna face. And then that so many families were impacted by autism and all disabilities, and no one really knew what the future held. And everyone goes to sleep, or every parent goes to sleep at night wondering what's gonna to happen to my child when we're no longer here to care for them. So the ABLE account is a tremendous opportunity to help with some of that financial burden. What, what, what can the funds be used to pay for? So the funds can be used for many different qualified, um, such as education, um, just really their own support, transportation, housing, and really the great, the, the, major, the major advantage of an ABLE account is that um, these people depend so much on Social Security disability. And if any money hits them personally, over $2,000, their Social Security disability is impacted significantly. Distributions from an ABLE account um, up to $15,000 a year will not impact Social Security disability. And that is huge for these families because like my boys, I want them to go out, earn a paycheck. Right, because that makes for a fulfilling life. I, 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 achieving a better life experience. That's what ABLE stands for. That's exactly what it means. And I know when my boys do something purposeful, you can see the smiles in their face. And it means so much to them. But so many can't achieve that because of the $2,000 limit that all these families face, and you really don't want to jeopardize governmental benefits, so you truly have to manage these ABLE accounts closely, but again, being able to earn up to $15,000 a year or $100,000 cumulatively, it's a huge advantage. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that, the $100,000 cumulatively, as long as you're still paying out $15,000, keeping it below that limit, $100,000 sounds like a lot, but not when you start considering the needs of maybe a child who is gonna need therapy, needs care, needs all the, I mean, there's so many things that come on, hand in hand with that. Sure, and, th and those needs are lifelong. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't end. So again, I think when I advise clients, we tell them to look at, use it as part checking account and part savings account. Because again, achieving $100,000 for someone disabled is a lot of money mm -hmm. because their earning potential is significantly limited. Um, but, but still, the ability to earn that kind of money. And again, as long as you manage it properly, this, prop, this account will probably last a, life, a lifetime for many of these young individuals. You know, you, you mentioned the idea that you could do this pretty easily, setting up something with a Vanguard account or somewhere else, mm -hmm. but it, there are some hurdles you have to jump through first. What did you have to do? Yeah, so it's a little challenging. Most parents um, of a disabled child go for guardianship after the age of 18, as I did for my boys. But what happens is you have a guardianship over the person, because most of these young individuals don't have an estate or don't have property for the reasons we just mentioned. But to open up an ABLE account, there's a little tweak to that guardianship paperwork because you have to have guardianship over the estate and property. So to open up an ABLE account, you have to make that little tweak to your guardianship paperwork. And, and that's something a lawyer can help you do, and then you can take that and go to set up the fund. Yes, once a special needs attorney does that, it's fairly easy to go online and open up the account yourself. Guardianship is expensive. If you need it, then yes, it's it's affordable. But, but it's usually not needed. You could do power of attorney or something like that. I cannot make that general statement. Okay. Yes, um, there are lots of instances where a power of attorney and supported decision making combined mm -hmm. will be great. But those are revocable. Your student, your your child can say. Oh, you're not my you're not my power of attorney anymore. I want I want this guy over here, Joe Blow, that I just met. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. so that's a little bit about the ABLE account. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about trusts, um, we have an attorney that I use quite a bit, Mike Bouguet. He's fabulous. Yes, he's very good. Um, I could start talking about trust and tell you what I do with Caden, um, but he goes into it very detailed and very legal. And so really for me to stand up in front of somebody and say, this is what trust is, it's really not my place from a professional standpoint. 
um, my only place I think from parent to parent um, of special needs you know child or adult is that you go do it and you, and you find out how to do it and figure it out and um, because you know again it's part of the process of you know <laughs> making sure that your child has the same quality of care um, as what you're giving them now. Well, and if you're going to do the insurance to provide that quality of care, you need the trust. You need the trust because yeah. it will become a taxable event when you die. Yeah. yeah. So just realize. That. I mean, if I have a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred fifty or half a million dollars policy, I want a half a million dollars going into that trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want it to be taxable or somebody else getting it or whatever. I mean, I want to be able to say, okay, I know Katie's going to have these expenses every month, and this is how much it is, you know, and you don't know how long he'll be around, or Stephen, or Ian, or Gage, but, you know, you can at least start the process, but please. You have relatives who want to leave stuff to your, right, your right. student, your, your child, that the trust, establishing the trust with part of that would be one of the best uses, right. to, in so, my opinion. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll give you just a quick example. <clears throat> Let's just say you had a walk or a run or a fundraiser for, you know, say we had it for Katie. Oh, we want to give Katie this, or we want to give Katie that. Or who do I make the check out to? Well, make it out to the Katie Black Trust. Because you take that and it goes straight into that trust. Caden never touches it. There's nothing, I mean, it's all the best route to go. I would rather write a check to the, you know, Gage Trust or Stephen Trust or Ian Trust mm -hmm. than I would just write a check to, you know, a mom or a dad or whatever. Um, not that I wouldn't, but I'm just saying doing those, yeah, doing those types of things is, is a good way just to run. Mm -hmm. Say business, but run you know that financial support. Can through. you lose the benefits between money and trust? No, okay, no, ma'am. So they, they can have it in an able account or a trust, and, okay. and, oh, and the money that they get out of the able account doesn't go to that two thousand dollar limit, right? Nope, they can and on that. the money from the trust does though. A lot of times, what you'll do is you'll have a, the a, if you have a big estate that's going to go to the kid, you're going to have a trust. And then you'll have some of that money trickle into your ABLES account as it's going to be needed. But you'll have somebody who manages all that. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then they can use the money out of that. Okay. Yep. All right. Just to that make it a little that clearer. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's that's best case scenario. No. You no. Know, that's, you know, that's, just, that's best. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's situation is different. Right. That's the best. That's the best. Okay. The best thing. So, um, you know, I know this was laid back. And I wanted it to be that way. I wanted y'all to be able to think, you know, and talk and kind of ask questions and learn who's in the room and, you know, what kind of resources are in the room. And, you know, questions are important. And um, so hopefully I've triggered um, some thoughts from the scorecard. Hopefully I've triggered some thoughts from what you're doing traditionally maybe right now um, and what you need to think about doing. Um, and uh, you know, just you know, we have to we have to remember that you know our kiddos, you know, they're going to need our support both when we're here and when we're gone. Um, and what that what's that plan going to look like? Um, what's how, how are we going to get there? And there's a way. There is a way, um, but it's a matter of actually taking action. Um, and I see way too many people that are like, oh, this is great info. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Da, da, da. They never take action. Um, they, they never do. Um, and, the, you know, the thing that really impacted me even more is I had a discussion with a friend of mine whose son went to high school with my son. Um, and he and I met and talked about his daughter who had been born with Down syndrome. Um, 
and she was I think she was six and um, he we talked about it laid everything out all that kind of thing the last thing I remember about is him saying Brian I'm going to get back with you and we're going to get on this um, eight months ago died of COVID mm. we never heard from him then I saw on Facebook, not that there's anything wrong with this, but saw a GoFundMe page um, for the kids and for the special needs daughter. And those things can't happen because I'm living proof. I'm glad I talked to him. I'm glad all those things. But the action part and the follow through part, just don't wait. It's just too vitally important um, to, to take action because um, they're all precious. All our lives are precious, but um, just, just my encouragement would be take action with what you've got um, tonight, and hopefully it'll be beneficial to you for the future as y'all plan. So, anyway, any questions that you want to ask somebody else or ask well, me? Well, so you said a good first thing is to write down Here's, uh -huh. here's my kids' routine, here's what they need day to day. Mm -hmm. So that's a good, easy first thing that you can take action. What's another thing? If it's like an easy thing, here's another step that you can take. So I think if I start taking more steps, then Figuring I'll be able to. Figuring out what your adequate funds are. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the whole process. That can be tied to your story. In my story, yeah. this is how much this costs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? That's a natural link. Right. Yeah, I would guess. I'm, I don't do no, it is yeah. because it's like, okay, yeah, pay right. 16, he lost his Medicaid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think I'm going to have to pay $15,000 a year for the rest of my life because he's on that. Um, right. That's a, do I have the adequate funds to do that? No. That, so that's got to go into that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and maybe you can't do the 15000 Well, put it in there because guess what? You never know who's going to come along and say, you know what? I'm going to pay for Katie's $15,000 worth of stuff. That's what I want to do for him. After we're gone, you know, it may come along. And you just don't know. So it's important that the adequate funds part, just, just brainstorm on. And that can be, you know, put down as just Caden's needs or Ian's needs, you know. And these, we don't all... I mean, we get our needs met, but we don't all get what we want, right? And so you may want, you know, something for Ian. It's okay to put in there, you know, this is a want or I need or he needs or wish I could have provided this or he sure does enjoy this, but we never, you know, had the money to go to Disney World or, you know, I mean, those things even, people knowing I mean, if I were to get a hold of, of something like that and I knew about it and I knew something that Ian needed or wanted, you know, I might say, you know what, I'm going to help, you know, do something for Ian or, or Stephen or Gage. I mean, you just don't know who's going to be here to support him, her, whatever it may be after you're gone. So, Is there a list of suggested needs? Because one of the things that overwhelms me about this is I'm afraid I'm going to forget something. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's that's my fear when I come up here is I'm fearful that I'm giving y'all like too much. Um, and that's why I don't like to talk a whole lot. That's why I like, you know, for us to be more engaged and ask questions. But there, you, you kind of, you know, from a need standpoint, I always started with kind of like, well, what are my needs at my age and what have they been since I was this tall? And so I kind of went back and thought through what were my needs, okay? So what were the traditional things that I needed, right? Now, he's going to need, she's going to need these things. I've, I've got that on there. But what additional is Ian going to need that I, I didn't have. I've got the foundation. i got the traditional foundation because it's what but now what do you have to do, you know what, is, what are you going to have to do that is, is going to be a little different? 
like is he going to need medical support mm -hmm. for anything for medication or, or transportation dental. or is he going to need yeah anything medical dental mm -hmm. physical or yeah. even is he going to need a nurse to come and undress him at night to put exactly. him in bed and then a, another nurse to come in in the morning right. to dress him and get him ready for his day yeah. you know even those kind of things is there a place with like an example of this um, I there's, know of, but not that I know of um, that could be something we can maybe make a Google but, for. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's Kinda something it that project on it's something that we can. I mean, that's why we're doing all this, y'all, is because this isn't we us knowing everything and that right. we go mayor's. I mean, that's not. It's about putting minds together and you know, kind of becoming a mastermind group to where we are able to help each other and come up with ideas like that. And then we're we'll find the needs of the community and then needs, get yeah. together. And what I think about, if I were to read one of your child's letters, is like Brian said, he may have a meltdown. Well, what do I do mm -hmm. during that meltdown? So like I used to have a child that I worked with who I would have to hold and just sing to him, and he would calm down, and then we could go on. So is that something? You know, I, I mean need that, that for my child. Exactly. He would find it so <laughs> I, would need, I, would need, I would need that in that letter. And like yeah. he said, he has certain things he likes to wear, and that's a big thing, especially, like I have a niece who, her, she, I don't know if this is too much information, she doesn't like her underwear, she'll wear underwear, she doesn't like for it to touch her privates, or mm -hmm. her bottom, they gotta be baggy on her. Little things like yeah. that Little are things. some things that you would want to go in there because those are the things that are going to, they're already gonna be going through something tough, losing their parent, yeah, yeah, yeah. so then you're gonna want this person to know that he's, you know, he's probably going to have a whole lot of meltdowns, and this is, this is well, well, things that, you can try. That I feel confident in writing, because I seem to imagine, what if I'm leaving them with a sitter or mm -hmm. grandparent, what are all the things? Right. Yep. But with the list of the expenses and the, you know, like, do I have adequate funds, I don't have a good grasp. I'm not the sure roof over their head, head being food, medicine, Fair care. care. Mm -hmm. Maybe go next month when you pay your bills. Make an Ian column. Yeah, I was gonna mm -hmm. say just like do your own budget. Yeah, you know, just like, add an Ian column to your brain or to your budget. to your yeah, Google spreadsheet. Well, I'm bills that might be right. Right. So my electricity bill is this. So let's just use that as a round starting point. My water bill is this. My rent is this. And by the way, when he's 18 and getting Social Security, um, you can charge him rent. Mm -hmm. And so, well, but I mean, he pays rent. That keeps the 2,000 under mm -hmm. It's a it's a journey. It's it's a um, it's a game. It's you know there's a course to go down and a course not to go down. Um, but you know this the whole plan part of it is where it starts. Right. And you know it's like I told you the, the lady that at least has five thousand dollars. I mean at least she took action. And that's what I told her. I said, I'm just impressed that you took action. Thing you did again. And that you're sitting here talking to me. Does he do insurance? Mm -hmm. Can you? I know with the beneficiary, let's say you have a trust established. Mm -hmm. Can you designate the trust as a beneficiary? So it goes. So if there was a payout for the insurance, it would go directly into the trust. Right. Rather than, you know, having to check it in. Yes, you <laughs> can. Yeah. So you can make the, but the, the kicker, the kicker there is, is who's your trustee gonna be? Right. To take care of that, right? Mm -hmm. So the trust can act as the beneficiary, but who's gonna be your trustee? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I talk, I mean, this is, I talked to, I got two younger brothers, and I talked to the one that I thought, well, Brad will be the one that, you know, Brad don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, he um, and he said, you know, it's just I, I told him, you know, I was like, you know, something's gonna happen, you know, I'd like for you to take care of Kate, and da da da. And he's like, Brian, he goes, I'm just gonna tell you, he goes, I just don't think I can. He goes, from what I see you go through, he goes, I just don't think that I can do that. I was like, Brad, you know what? It's it's okay. He goes, I'll take a bullet for you in the alley. 
he said, as far as that, he knows it. Uh, I just wouldn't be vindicated. You know. Right. So, um, went to my other brother, and my other brother was, uh, Jeff was, was I mean, he wants to, to do that and, and wants to be a trustee. So, um, there's the trustee. I've spent six, eight, ten, three months with people because mm -hmm. think about the other siblings part on mm -hmm. there. What if Brad didn't want to? What if Jeff didn't want to? What if my nephew didn't want to? What if my niece didn't want to? Mm -hmm. Who Who's going to do it? I mean, it takes time to think through those things. And so you don't know. I mean, I thought I knew how family was going to react, mm -hmm. and I didn't. And so sometimes you have to, it takes a while to think through just this process. Well, you have to know the information to tell them that they're going to be responsible for too. Yeah, it's, it's not just will you be the trustee. They're, right, they're exactly. Gonna say, what does that mean? How does that work? So yeah. you have to have all that information mm -hmm. yeah. to really answer your questions. It's like an executor, executor of a will yeah. that, that goes on and on oh, and yeah. on and on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they can. There's a lot of things to think of. Y'all call me, text me, I mean, anytime. I'd love to sit down with you and talk about, you know, specifics. You need help with a list or you need help with, you know, Gage is different than Stephen, is different than Ian, is different than everybody. So, uh, yeah, it, it takes, it's kind of a group. And so they can be part of the Waco Mayor's Committee, too, yeah. if you want to tell exactly. them. What is that? You know, I heard, this the first time I've ever heard of that. Thing. Oh, no. Yes. We have to work on our marketing. I know. Yeah. Who's here? Oh, she's not here. Yeah, Kim's not here. Yeah. What's our website, Brian? Ability, AbilityWaco.com. Yeah, what do y'all do? So, basically, our whole goal um, is to help educate um, people within the community um, of things like we're doing tonight. Um, needs of people needs with Needs of people um, yeah, that might have. have no, that we might have, you know, that might have a disability and, and yeah, awareness. There are a lot of organizations, and I'm not talking bad, but we've talked about this in our meetings. There's a lot of organizations out there um, that are really good at events. They're really good at, you know, doing certain things. So what's the Waco Mayor's Committee good at? Are we really good at events? No. That's not, we have a board and you look at them you go they're all from kind of education or they're kind of from you know service standpoint or they're from you know this or that and so that's what we're trying to do with this is share about the therapy share about the financial plan because yeah. I've talked to some of the leaders of those organizations and it's just well, and we're also trying to establish a best buddies group oh, yeah. for the um, 23 and older group yep. Yep. because there is a best buddies group that meets with Baylor, but it's mostly 35 to 45 year old men. And so we yeah. want to get the age group that's closer to that group, but also have something for Waco and surrounding community, even if we just meet quarterly trying to establish that best buddies yeah. group. So and peers. Yeah. So, yes. So we'll have yep. some information coming out in future of these awesome. about that. Yeah. So. And that's what Waco Mayor's Committee Waco yeah. Mayor's Committee is is you hop on there and you'll find all these people doing all of these things and can tell you about all of them. Or give us yeah. a need and we can yeah. tell exactly. you oh, we need to talk with yes. or or hey, that's something we haven't thought about. Let's start a list. Let's, you know. And sometimes there's other parents. And that it's our, just parents. Our website, we do not have attended all, teachers, but most all of the people. special needs events from all of the different groups listed on there as well. Oh, okay. So we're, we're trying to kind of be like a one stop shop. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Is it or? Yeah. Uh, um, but we have so many. I mean, if I could tell you the amount of resources that are on those calls. I can't even begin to tell you the, the wealth of in the, I mean the wealth of education and resources that are out there within this group is unbelievable.
Well, when yeah, I introduced yeah. myself, I told y'all, that's the reason I joined Waco Mayor's Committee yeah. when I was becoming a transition specialist. Yeah. And as a parent or as a young person with a disability, that would be very helpful, a very helpful place to start to make those connections and yeah. know what's coming up next. And oh, but that's all for kids. What are we doing for young adults? Or, mm -hmm. you know, um, the a, we have a board member who is on the uh, Aging and Disability Council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so he is a wealth of knowledge for, for the different oh, ends of it, you yes. know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I do want to say too that um, if you, I work with the Ranger Moore, awesome. the, uh, okay. the Trans One Stop. Um, so oh, yeah. you know of any veterans yes. who need to do wheels, power attorney. Baylor, I got one. Baylor Law comes over there. They're coming this week and doing a clinic. Okay. Awesome. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, some people can get it. So, and it's free. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of. You should come to our meetings monthly because you could duel. You could yeah. parent and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and how can they receive And we're still doing it by Zoom, so it's not. <laughs> well, it's even easier. Yes. <laughs> and and there problem. is a monthly yeah. newsletter. How can they add? Go to Wake, 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 not Wake Mayor's Committee Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And the AbilityWaco.com website, and you can fill it out, and you'll get our monthly reminders. And also different events. When If you know of events, you can post mm -hmm. them on the Facebook page. Can you page. check your junk email? Yeah. Well, yes, please no, check I your junk email and he fixes it. Mailchimp yeah. just it goes to yeah, junk. So please to, check your junk spam, yeah. what have you. But um, I learned more on the Facebook page, like of things that are coming out. Yes. Yeah. So if you know so, events, please share them on the Facebook stuff. page. Um, because yeah. I don't want to spam your email too much by sending out the newsletter every week. Um, but always post on the Facebook page and then we send it out twice a month because we And if you liked yeah. this Tell two or three friends. Yeah. yeah. About yeah. our yeah. next one. Yeah. Free yeah. food, free childcare. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this was good. I didn't even you know, know anything. We're so glad you came. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. heard a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Molly, what's our next topic? There's so much stuff. Here, I'll go get a thing. I got a Thank y'all for coming. Appreciate it. I'm pretty good. I have two flyers. I have two flyers. I have two flyers. So, so, yeah. I have two flyers. So you can send us the medical. Yeah. What about the social group thing? What's that? No. Beautiful. Beautiful. Next one is navigating resources for IV. This is therapy. Yeah. Um, this is therapy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.